Okay, we're back. And the mission is to take these ribs and experiment with some different ways of cooking them. And I'm going to go with uh, baking them in the oven and then finishing them in the air fryer. So let's go ahead and get a couple of these sheet pans and get some foil on the bottom of these things. Because I hate scrubbing these sheet pans. So we're just going to line them with some foil. And on one of these sheet pans, I think what I'm going to try is cooking them on top of a rack. And on the other sheet pan, I'm going to try just cooking them right on the foil itself. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So let's line, line these pans. I'm going to try to make this pretty easy, and I'm going to try to make it a short cook of two, two and a half hours at 350 degrees. So let's preheat the oven to 350, start that, and let's take a look and see what we got here. So what I'm going to do is, they should be defrosted by now, or close enough. We're going to start opening these ribs up and deciding what we want to do with them. God, look at these. They're beautiful. This one is one whole rib. So I think what I'm going to do is I want to take one on the uh, on the rack. I think I'm going to cut these up first. I think I want to cut these and bake them individually. See how that comes out. So let's get myself the big knife and let's cut these well this is easier said than done. Is this two ribs or three ribs here? Uh, evidently, it's just two big ribs. So let's take these and put them there like that. Okay, and now let's take this small little rack of beef ribs. And just... This is also two ribs, but I'm going to try this one not cut up to see if it, if it comes out a little better. And then we've got this package here, which is from the same, the same batch of ribs from a big haul of prime rib that I bought right at Easter time, which is when Publix has one of their biggest sales. And here we've got two hefty pieces of meat. And this is prime rib, so it's not like a chuck that's going to need a tremendous amount of uh, slow cooking to make it tender. It should be pretty nice. And I, and I don't want this to become a stew or 
in a slow cooker falling off the bone. I want it to become big meaty ribs that I can pick up in my hands and eat. And that looks tremendous. Look at those. And I'm going to take these two and I'm going to put them down on the foil itself. And I'm going to take this smaller little rack and stick it here. And I think that gives me basically four different things to try and see how they come out. One of them cut apart and not cut apart on a elevated off the foil. Same thing here, but right down on the foil. So basically this might cook in some of the fat that comes out of them, whereas this one won't, the fat will drip through. So we're going to salt these real good and we're going to see how they come out. And they'll come out in plenty of time for me to have them for dinner tonight. And then after I get done with this, I'm going to cook myself some bacon and eggs for my first meal. And, and I'm not going to bore you with that. Because you've all seen that many times before. Okay. So... I'm going to salt this real well, only on one side, I think, because the, I think the membrane is probably still on the bottom. And I've learned to cook and eat the membrane because it contains a lot of collagen and not remove it since the video I made where I did remove the membrane from the pork ribs, which is not a real fun thing to do anyway, so it's good to have an excuse not to have to remove it because it's healthier that way. So there we go. I want to stick these things in the oven. Get that here. Can I get them in sideways? Yes, I can. Do I have room to get them in side by side maybe? No, I don't. So I'm going to have to put them on different shelves in the oven, which is fine. And uh, we're going to see what happens in two, two and a half hours. We'll take a look at them and see what temperature. So I'll see you back then and we'll see what the results of this little experiment was. I'm not giving you the day off yet. You gotta wait till later. We are back. It's been about uh, almost two and a half hours, I think. So they by all rights, should be done now. Get myself a, a mitt. And we'll take these things out and see what happens. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. That looks, that actually just looks done. That doesn't even look like it needs any finishing in the air fryer that just looks that just looks done holy mackerel look at those those look delicious wow 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 look how nice they look um honestly looking they're too hot to try right now but honestly looking at these Other than the fact there's a little bit of fat in the foil on these things, since they're arched up, I don't think there's going to be much difference. And if there isn't much difference, then cooking them in the foil itself might uh, in a little less cleaning because you don't have to clean up that grate or soak the grate. The other thing I want to see is in cutting the ones that I cooked in a rack, is there any difference in the moisture or any of the texture instead of cooking them individually where they cook more evenly around all sides? Well, we're going to have to let these things cool off a little while before we cut into them and see what happens. So we'll be right back. All right, I'm back. They're still a little bit warm, but we're going to... Uh, Give them a little taste test anyway, so we can draw a conclusion 
to this video. I don't think it would be wise to put these things into any any more of a cooking thing, but I'll let you know once I cut this open. So let's uh, let's split this this rib in half. There it is. And see what they look like. That membrane is still on there, which is good. And I want to see if they're still a little chewy or if they taste done. Mm, got a good flavor. But let's take a look at one of the ones. That I, uh, I cooked by itself and let's just cut off a little bit of this meat off the end here and taste that and see how that is. It just looks, looks delicious. That is very tasty. Certainly not undercooked, perhaps maybe 15 minutes left, maybe two less, maybe two hours and 15 minutes, but it's, uh, it's very good, very good. The texture is, you know, it's not as tender as a, like a ribeye steak, but this is the rib of the ribeye and, uh, it certainly is a hell of a lot more tender than, say, a rib roast would be if it had been cooked the same way. The flavor is wonderful. Salt, just salting the top seemed to be enough. So I think that uh, until I find something better, I'm happy with this. And it's just another idea of something you can do. When I buy these big racks these big uh, rib roasts in the whole loin, when they're on sale, they do come with the ribs attached. And sometimes I leave it and slice them up so that each steak has a rib. And sometimes I have the butcher just carve off the whole rack of ribs, which is why I ended up with all these. Anyway, another idea of a different way to have the same food, beef, give you a little bit of variety. Now, you can take the rest of the day off and eat meat.